Hello everyone, thank you for joining me again today. Really appreciate it. It's raining in Topeka, Kansas, which is wonderful after all the heat that we've had. So there's nothing like a good rainy day to talk about sewing and go to the sewing room and get something done. So today I'm gonna to bring Erin in and she and I are just gonna do this together. And that means there's nobody behind the camera. So we'll hope that uh, you can see us just fine. And uh, too bad, I guess we won't know if you can't. Hello. <laughs> but I wanted to bring Erin in because um, we're gonna, well, she's made a skirt and we wanna talk about that. But we also mm -hmm. wanna talk about tomorrow's launch for yes. So Confident. Yes. So you get to hold up what you made. Okay, sounds good. And I'm gonna hold up what I made. So, you know, the sewing workshop's been around since 1991. Yeah. So that is 30 years, right? It would be. Yeah, yeah. 30 years. Okay. Wow. So 30 years ago, we had a pattern called the panel pants. And it was a pattern that was based on kind of a rendition of a Japanese gardener pant. So it has, it had three panels down the center front and then this what we called knee patch. And of course in traditional times, you would put padding in that knee patch. Did you know this? You told me, you, yes. Yes. And so that when you kneeled in the garden, your knees mm -hmm. would be comfortable. Well, so we've styled the, we styled the panel pants after that. We didn't put the padding in the knee and all that. It was a fashion statement. Well, you and Betsy, you went to the basement. It's you went fun to the to vault. go to the basement, yeah, to yeah. the vault, yes. Exactly. <laughs> and, some, and I don't know, a couple, three months ago, you all came upstairs um, bearing panel pants. And we decided to insert it into So Confident for September. Mm -hmm. So what did we do to it? We updated it a little bit. Updated it, um, shortened it. it shortened really it by long. a lot, like mm -hmm. four inches. Mm -hmm. it, had a, it had like hammer pants crotch. <laughs> Didn't. A little extreme. A little yes. extreme, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't have that anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, we added a lining, yes. only because of the fabrication that we're going to use for September. So mm -hmm. Confident 2021, or yeah, 21 Series 10, has really been about working with a different fabric every month. We started out with cotton jersey, we've gone through rayon crepes, denim, um, cotton print, cotton prints, a couple months of cotton prints, shirtings. Mm -hmm panel fabrics, not panel pants, mm. panel fabrics. <laughs> Ramy and <laughs> Ramy linen. Ramy and linen. So this month is, September, is all about working with crinkled silk georgette. Now we normally think about that as a very dressy fabric, but we're putting this into casual wear. So yes. these are the ones that you made, and this is one of the kits. You can see that they're a full leg, but when you make them in this sort of very drapey silk georgette fabric, they're very mm -hmm. slimming, really, when they're on. You'll yes. see pictures of us. Mm -hmm. We went to Lawrence, Kansas, and went to a Japanese garden and took the photos, and they turned out pretty good. So mm -hmm. this, this is mine, a paisley print, and yours is the, we're calling it River Rock. We have a floral option and we have a black and white option as well, which we'll talk about a little bit more next week. Uh, but those of you who are members of So Confident will get your prep letter tonight mm -hmm. at midnight. Yes. Are you going to stay up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it'll be there and uh, you can get started. Now, one of the things that is included in your prep letter this time is the DIY pants fitting tutorial. And that's a pretty comprehensive tutorial on how to measure yourself and how to do some basic but slightly beyond mm -hmm. basic. Uh, basic but important. Basic fitting. but important. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's basically what you can do yourself, right. you know, without help. When you're home alone in your sewing room, these are the things that you can actually do yourself. So show what you wore with yours in the photo shoot. Okay. So we have, I'll get this out here. A mace on top, and we loved the stripes with it. We thought the black and white stripes really complemented the print. And then this kind of was a happy accident here, but we thought it needed a little bit something extra. And so we found this pearl jacket and the colors just really popped. Yeah. And then I made a Eureka top for mine. 
in the check, which is a mm -hmm. little bit unexpected, but there's a tonal value that's similar. I like the, the hard checks with the more um, kind of mm, the paisley, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but one of the things that we've done is line these pants. So you're going to learn how to line pants, and we've lined all of the kits in silk georgette in black. Mm -hmm. So you're going to learn how to work with this fabric, learn how to do an interesting waistband treatment, how to hem this sort of fabric, talk about mm -hmm. fitting. So that is September, starting tonight at yes. midnight. And they're so comfortable, too. They are. Betsy, mm -hmm. I, I was interested to know that Betsy and Aaron really fell in love with these pants. Because, you know, I, I think of something that's 30 years ago and think, well, that's old hat. But you guys thought it was fresh and new mm -hmm. and right on and trendy and, right. and so. comfortable. And mm -hmm. for Betsy to say she likes these pants, that's kind of a big deal. Very. She yeah. doesn't wear pants so very she often. Wear, yeah. <laughs> she wears these pants. So. <laughs> um, all right. So. Oh, yes. You got that. We had had that conversation about a month ago. Exactly. <laughs> so two days ago was Iris Atfell's birthday, 100th birthday. And I, had, wow. I don't know how I found out about this, um, other than I may have found out about the illustrator, Kristen Barnhart, whose work I really like. It's kind of a primitive style, but I love the watercolor type, loose style of her um, illustrations. And it happens to be that she illustrated this book, which is part of a series called Little People, Big Dreams, and it's a children's book. But they, in the series, there are, they, they feature all kinds of people, like Aretha Franklin and Pele, and my favorite tennis player, Yvonne Gulagong, and Frida Kahlo, Coco Chanel. And so the books are learning about someone who had childhood dreams and how those dreams came into their lives forever. And Iris Apfel has, is known for her fashion. She's a fashion icon and actually wasn't discovered to be such until she was 84 years old, which is interesting. Uh, but I remember her, she and her husband owned a company called Old World Weavers. And Old World, we old, it's hard to say, Old World Weavers was a fabric company that I used to sell as an interior designer. And she was an interior designer for the White House. That was one of her clients. And Old World Weavers used to do these luscious uh, reproductions of old fabrics, beautiful fabrics. So at any rate, she's a very interesting person. And I thought you might want to check out her documentary, some of the books that are about her. But I brought it up today because this is her most famous um, Um, what, her look or her? Well, her, her, um, her, her, her fashion statement. This is her fashion statement. By the way, you should follow her on Instagram. You know the famous uh, less is more. Mm -hmm. Architects and, <laughs> okay, well hers is more is more and less is a bore. Okay. You had to flip around somewhere. Right, exactly. <laughs> so that leads us into today, which mm -hmm. is all about let's make ourselves a fun skirt or bottom. Yes. Because yes. we don't always want these prints all over us. She does. I mean, she, she might. Does. <laughs> she does. She may. Right. Well, I mean, she doesn't wear just one necklace. She mm -hmm. wears 25. Right. Right. Very bold colors. I mean, right. statement pieces. Right. She and her husband yes. would travel the world mm -hmm. and pick up flea market finds and um, her, in this documentary, you see her apartment in New York and it's just jammed full of all these trinkets and and clothes and rooms full of clothes. It's, mm -hmm. And then she had a, uh, they had a Metropolitan Museum of Art exhibition of her clothes. So anyway, there's all kinds of things about her. You should check her out. But today we're talking about prints. So you made this skirt. I did. So this is the Six Sense skirt and made out of this famous rooster print <laughs> that we have in two different colorways. Yeah. Um, it is a medium weight cotton, um, which I think is great for the six cent skirt. So it really retains the shape and it shows the angles really well of the pattern. They call this a canvas. 
when we bought it. But you know, it's not canvas. It is a heavier weight cotton, no question. Mm -hmm. But they call it Kansas. But it's a hundred canvas. I said Kansas, didn't I? <laughs> We're in Kansas. We're in Kansas. With the canvas. Right, exactly. <laughs> but you, it's hard to see the roosters, but they're mm -hmm. there. There's mm -hmm. a rooster with mm -hmm. his mm -hmm. little, and here's the other colorway. <clears throat> yeah, of the green with the little aqua accent. Mm -hmm. But we just mm -hmm. fell in love with this fabric. And this is the kind of skirt that works really well with these slightly heavier weight fabrics. It's basically two rectangles. So it's easy to make mm -hmm. and easy to fit. There's a seam down the center back. So it's two rectangles, elastic in the back. The two rectangles come around, cross over, and then there's a pocket here at the side, right here, mm -hmm. that's what holds the skirt together. Mm -hmm. So I was coming out of the grocery store this morning and it was and the rain was coming upon us and it was windy and this skirt blew open and I was fine. <laughs> I noticed that. <laughs> so, yeah, no problem with that. So you yes. have on one, black um, and white. Yes, this is a black and white knit. So you can make it in a variety of different fabrics um, from woven to medium weight. Knits. Yep. And you're wearing it with? Mm -hmm. Eureka top um, in the rib knit. Yep. Which we just got in in a lot of colors. We got, we're going to do another whole rib knit uh, Instagram because we got like 20 colors in. Amazing. I'm wearing the six cent skirt also. I did a little different uh, band on the front yes. where I cut off the front and added this uh, other piece of fabric, this, the black and white stripe. And then I have on a shortened helix. You haven't seen this. No, actually. No. But oh, normally the yeah. helix is about four inches longer, oh, but I like it shortened. And it, I think this skirt needs a shorter top. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, the Eureka, the Helix, mm -hmm. the ET, maybe a little bit shorter. Um, I'd be hard pressed to wear a long shirt with this. It needs right. to be a little bit shorter. Mm -hmm. But so. we Makes love sense. our six cent skirts. This is a printed pattern. Um, mm -hmm. And then we have a couple of other skirts that we like. This is the 8th Avenue. 8th Avenue. Mm -hmm. And this one's actually a, a, a more fitted skirt in that it has a, an invisible zipper on one side, has a nice facing that falls over the top edge of the, pant, of the skirt and forms what looks like some binding. It has this inserted triangle shape. I don't know, I, I like mm -hmm. this skirt. It comes mm -hmm. in the pattern either short or long. This is the short version, that's the long version. So statement skirts. Mm -hmm. But we also like our Valencia pants. And this is in the same fabric as the roosters. Right. Same cotton. Yeah, a little heavier cotton. Um, but both of these have one common thing. They have the same waistband treatment, different mm -hmm. widths. This one is one inch and the skirt is an inch and a half. But we like this because it's flat across the front and elastic around mm -hmm. the back. Now the Valencians don't have a side seam, which has its advantages. First of all, if you think about it, it it's very straight up and down on the side. So even if you're curved, you look straighter. And then of course, if you're using prints and stripes and other things, you don't have to match anything in the side seam. That's I like fantastic. that. Yeah. So, uh, but let's talk about this waistband okay. a little bit. You I think I'm going to bring it in and then I'm going to make sure we got some good camera, camera angles right. on it. So I'm going to go behind the camera. So let's talk about this waistband because this waistband can be used on a lot of different things. But uh, the waistband is, is applied to the pants or the skirt like normal. One to one ratio, uh, whatever width, one inch in this case for the Valencia pants. And you sew the waistband on, and then you turn it down, and then you leave an opening on the left-hand side, about a two-inch opening right here. Now, of course, our pattern indicates where this opening should be and where some top stitching is going to be. But if you're just doing this on anything without benefit of owning the pattern, the top stitching is where a crease would be in the pants if you were to crease pants. Now creases are sort of out and we're not creasing our pants at the moment, but 
nevertheless, that is where you would define where the, that top stitching would be. This, the distance between this top stitching line varies with size. It's anywhere between seven and nine inches. But you can hold a tape measure up to yourself and sort of figure out where the center of your leg is, where the pleats would be, and that's where you would uh, mark where you're going to be top stitching. So this top stitching wouldn't be done yet. You're just leaving this opening. And then here's how you feed the elastic through this. So first of all, I have my easy threader, which is my favorite tool, by the way, for feeding elastic. I have this one inch elastic pinned to the eye end of this. And we use stretch right non-roll elastic. I really like this elastic and it really doesn't roll and it doesn't break down over time with wearing or laundering. It holds up about as well as any elastic that I have found. So you're going to go in this opening right here, in this left hand opening, and you're going to start feeding the elastic through this casing until the end of the elastic is over here. So you're going to bypass this entire front section coming in through the left hand side so the end is right there. Then you're going to feed the elastic all the way around to come out here. But before I do that, when I get to this point right here is when I actually top stitch this. A couple of rows of top stitching. That anchors it so it's held in place until I get the other end of the elastic to here. Then I top stitch it and then I close up this opening. That's the only way you can leave this without any elastic. So you start at the left and the tail end of the elastic comes clear to the right hand side. It's a fantastic um, method of, I'm not sure how we figured out how to do that, I've kind of forgotten. <laughs> the Valencia pants have been around for a little bit and we, we've done it on a couple three patterns. So hopefully you'll like that technique and use it. Doesn't matter the width of the elastic. We do give the dimensions in the pattern of how long to, uh, cut the elastic, but it's pretty easy to put this around your waist, figure out where those dimensions are, give it a little tug so it feels like it's going to be snug around your waist, and then figure out how long that is. So I kind of have that number logged into my brain so I always know what number I'm going to cut, what dimension I'm going to cut for my elastic. So that is the elastic. Good. Can we, um, we did have one question that pertained to that. Sure. Uh, um, what is the, um, please repeat the width between the top stitching lines. Was it seven or nine inches? Well, it depends on you. Between seven and nine inches. This is where the pleats would be on you. So for some people it would be seven inches and for some people it'd be nine, it might be 10, it might be 11, it might be four. It won't be four, but it really does vary. So that is determined by you. Okay. okay. All right, well let's, oh, while I'm talking about Valencia pants, I had an email right before I came up to the studio from someone who was struggling with narrowing legs of pants and losing the grain line and what she was uh, referring to as balance of the grain line. I've actually asked her to communicate with me in a different way, but I want to point out to you that because these pants don't have a side seam, then you have more limited options for narrowing the leg. Now, one of the, there are two ways to narrow the leg on this, and one of the ways is to use the, what we call back leg to full instructions that are on page 36 of our fitting encyclopedia. And I've done this on Facebook Live before, so I, I don't know if Betsy can refer back to which one that was. It's, we've sort of gotten lost in all of these Facebook Lives, so it might be difficult. But just know that it's on page 36 of this book, and if you own this book, 
This is also in a Threads magazine. It's also in our DIY pants fitting tutorial, which you will be getting uh, with this month's September's face, um, So Confident. But it also is in a separate DIY pants fitting t tutorial that you can purchase. All right, um, so you can also, because normally, you know, when you taper a leg, you want to taper the same amount, both the inseam and the outseam. Well, there's no outseam here. So I would narrow the leg a little bit using that back leg too full. Then you can come in and narrow the leg a little bit on the inner leg, but there is a limit. You're never going to be able to get the Valencia pants into a skinny pant. That's another pattern something like the helix pants, the pencil pants, the Madrid pants, the um, getaway jeans, all of those are narrow leg pants ready to go. Or something like our Chesney pants where you have two seams that you can narrow equally both inside and outside. Then you can get those pretty skinny. But these pants, I've made these Valencia pants for years in, in everything from four ply silk so they're just liquid feel very dressy to a heavier weight cotton such as this. Lots of linen, some worsted wools. Um, they would be great in ponte knit. It's, it's just one of the best pants patterns we've had. It used to be part of a printed pattern that had a jacket, but we discontinued the printed pattern and now the Valencia pants is a download pattern only. And we do have extended size in this. Did we, did we do that in the download? I'm um, honestly, or which pattern the Valencia pattern pants? Yes. Yes, it goes up to 5X. Yes. yes, that's what I thought. So extra small to XXL and then 2X to 5X, all included in that download pattern. But just know that this pattern fits pretty true to size. You're not going to um, be able to cheat on this. You have to measure yourself and uh, pick the size that gives you four inches of ease around the hips and live with whatever the size says. You know, we all like to think that you know after that after we don't eat the pasta tonight we're going to be able to wear a different size or uh, we're going to lose weight next week. Yeah. Uh, for the skirt it's pretty easy to adjust this back seam for size. You can determine your size of course by our sizing chart and cut out your rectangles and then just pin that back seam together and decide how how much ease you want mm -hmm. and sew up the seam or a little bit, little bit of seam out whatever uh, really easy to fit this also works shorter it's an easy pattern to shorten because it's just two rectangles that can be shortened right off of the bottom we may have lengthened sh shortened lines on it i can't really remember but for sure it can just come off the bottom because it's a straight bottom even though it is on the diagonal, when it hangs on you, the bottoms are cut on the straight. So the tops are slightly askew. All right, well, shall we talk about fabric? Okay. All right. We'll come back around. Yeah. <laughs> so we've pulled out some interesting fabrics that we think would make really fun skirts. And you could wear simple tops, Eurekas, Helixes, ETs. Don't get too complicated on the top. Just something right. simple. Mm -hmm. All right, where should we start? Let's start with those All fantastic right. birds there. I know. <laughs> now, do you like these birds? I do. I like the colors. She, Erin uh, has a thing about birds. I don't like birds near me, but I like birds in art and fabric, <laughs> but do not But don't them. fly around you? Oh, no. no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> well, these are like toucans or something like that, aren't they? Well, I don't, I don't know. know. I think there's multiple parrots. kinds. Parrots. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Toucan and parrots right. and exactly. right, parakeets. But this maybe. is so fun. Bright colors. Uh, mm -hmm. This would make a great shirt, too. I could see this as a cottage shirt, a yes. fun sort of summer shirt as well. Well, you know, we are in Kansas, so we're a land of the cowboys and the cowgirls. Some people think. <laughs> some people, yeah, some people think that's, that's true. Actually, it is true. Uh, so we have our, our two... 
Um, actually, these are uh, Mexican cowboys. They're not mm -hmm. Kansas cowboys and cowgirls. But I, lo I love these prints. These, this one's upside down. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to make sure we can see these from the yeah. camera angle. So Aaron's going to go back to the <laughs> camera and make sure, because I might be pulling some of them <laughs> off of the wall here in a minute. But we have the off-white cream background and the one with the pink background as well. Yeah. And I just think they're so much fun. <laughs> now, just as an aside, um, <laughs> which has nothing to do with anything we're talking about. But every Christmas, I make my husband a pair of boxer shorts. Right. That's and I always try to find some really fun fabric. And I don't know. There's one of these on this wall mm -hmm. says boxer shorts. I think it's this one right here. I think it might be. <laughs> of course, the dancing people wouldn't be uh, too, you know, whatever. <laughs> anyway. All right. So then we have Frida Kahlo. Day of the Dead. I love mm. this, this primitive Thank you. look. Uh, Great color combination. Yeah, khaki background with pinks mm. and purples. Mm -hmm. But you can definitely see it's Frida. Isn't that funny how there's just an, an icon like someone like her, you know exactly who this is because of the buns and the eyebrows. Mm -hmm. That's all you need to know to know that it's Frida Kahlo. And the, the print, you know, just the way, even the way it's yeah. the whole entire piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. So that would be fun. I now like this, this one, one isn't bold, but there's something about this that is very whimsical and really uh, unique. Yeah. And it looks over. like it's uh, yeah. <laughs> it looks like it's been done with a fountain pen, or as mm -hmm. I've learned recently, a fude pen. Oh, you know what a fude pen is? I don't. Well, a fude pen is a fountain pen that has an angular tip, nib, oh. and mm -hmm. so you mm -hmm. can use the same nib for a broad line or a narrow line mm -hmm. or anything in between and that's called nice. food day because you've been really getting into the well yes i like now i'm a fountain pen. fountain pen yeah <laughs> but I this looks it. to me like a fountain pen mm -hmm. art cactus flowers butterflies again this would make a great shirt any of these would make mm -hmm. a great shirt actually right that's, i love Fun that skirt. One. and i would put a black top with this a black eureka mm -hmm. top i think so yeah definitely make it simple I love this one. I love this one too. Well, we just mm -hmm. got these in and mm -hmm. we just ordered them like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So these are fresh, fresh to us. But look at these colors. Mm -hmm. Isn't More this birds. amazing? I just love that. The birds and the flowers and really mm -hmm. fantastic vegetation and, and fruit from berries to cherries to oranges. I mean, it's got everything in it. It's fantastic. Yeah really fun. Mm -hmm. So what would you put with this? What color would you pull out? Well, I think I would probably pull out maybe the really rich eggplant purple. Um, I think that would be a nice um, kind of subdue, you know, yeah. calm it down a little bit maybe. I, was, I could have sworn you were going to say blue. <laughs> that is my favorite color. <laughs> yes, but, but I agree with you. The eggplant mm -hmm. or blue. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe more of a navy or a darker blue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, if you need help with coordinating things, you can always call us. We're willing mm -hmm. to, or email us, whatever. We're willing to find things mm -hmm. to go with things. We do that all the time for people. Right. We take pictures of different fabrics and put them together and show you what they would look like together with right. buttons. And yeah. So it's fun. <laughs> all right. This is uh, people. People. Lots of people. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where these people are, but they all have really interesting hairdos. So we can, we can see this one up close. Maybe. Yeah. So we have redheads and brunettes and long-haired people. Is it all women? I think it is now that I look at it. I think so. Yeah, it is women. Women with aqua hair. They've got hats. They've got stripes on and flowers. Yeah. And it's really fun. Look like they're having a conversation. Maybe. Yep. We've seen this one, although we mm -hmm. haven't seen it right side up. <laughs> All right, then we have the dancing. This, I love this one. <laughs> of course, I'm waiting for the next season of Dancing with the Stars. Just thinking that. You yep. always are in tune to when that's I know. going on. <laughs> Linda McGeehy and I have a thing. Um, I know her from the days of being on the road teaching and all of that. And she and I 
always communicate during Dancing with the Stars to see who's going to win and who got <laughs> canned for the night and all of that. Anyway, it reminds mm -hmm. me of this. This is fun. It's interesting that several of these have this neutral background. Right. And khaki. Kind of unexpected. And, yeah, the khaki is not as Yeah, we common. don't we don't have many fabrics that have this kind of mm -hmm. color wave, so mm -hmm. it's it's new and different for us. But it makes the colors really pop, I think, when it has that yeah. background. Now, like if you that. made a six cent skirt out of this, even though it's sort of a stripe, it would hang on the diagonal in the front. True. Mm -hmm. This is quite subdued, but oh, I love this fabric. So this is cotton and hemp. So it has a linen-like feel to it. Mm -hmm. And it has this sort of glazed line on it, I'll call it. Mm -hmm. Iridescent, off-white line. This is from Japan. It's by Nanny Iro. And I'm crazy about this fabric. Make a great skirt. It has a paint splatter mm -hmm. uh, look to it. Yeah, very hand, mm -hmm. hand drawn. But these are the kind of fabrics that, you know, they're a little bit hard to tell what they are on the website. Mm -hmm. And so we always like to promote them or feature them mm -hmm. on a Facebook Live and tell you that they really are fantastic. This has even it's more back. speckles on it. Right. Yeah. So the, it varies from width to width. You don't know what you're going to get in this fabric when you mm -hmm. cut it out. It's going to be really. Nothing to match and all of that, but really different. Yeah, I like that. I like that neutral. Putting the neutral on the bottom is nice, too. Seeing See, a lot of that. You're seeing a lot of the khaki and the camel on the bottom with a white top. Yes. And I would put a white t-shirt with that. Mm -hmm. Plain Definitely. white t-shirt. Mm -hmm. And, of course, sneakers. Right. We have on sneakers today. She has on high tops. Yes. I have on low tops. <laughs> but always sneakers. All right. This may be my favorite. Is this one upside down? Yes. yes. All right. Black background, colorful cactus and flowers. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm just a sucker for black background fabrics. Black background with floral? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. I ha Aaron has to kind of stop me. You do. From taking all the... Well, you do. For, for from, buying, from buying all mm -hmm. the black background mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. No, stop. We have a lot of them, she says. <laughs> okay. But I love them. So anyway, mm -hmm. I love this. And this is the same print, right, as the neutral. Oh, is it? it is. Uh, it sure is. Interesting. Just this is the yeah, colorway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, I like that. All right. Okay. Now we're over here. Yeah, this one has lycra in it, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Cotton and lycra. Very happy. Jungle print. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like this one. I think that would make a great skirt or jacket. Um, I think Charlie Bomber, um, Quincy, you know, so it would make a cute little crop jacket too. Yes, it would. Same with this one. Well, you made a bomber jacket out <laughs> no, of this. That which, might be why. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. Um, mm -hmm. And you lined it? Yes, lined it with this really great blue here. Um, and you used ribbing, mm -hmm. blue ribbing, I think. Uh, more the peach. Okay, okay. Ribbing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, skirt, bomber jacket, I mean, the extremes, of course, but does this mm -hmm. one have lycra? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So mm -hmm. if you're making pants, of course, the lycra is a good thing. I'm gonna angle the camera over here. All right. Make and sure. this one is a, a cotton. Again, this, all, all three of these have that slightly heavier weight feel to them, but they have lycra in them, so they're very comfortable. I could see a pair of getaway jeans in this one. Oh, I like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. the like mm -hmm. paint splattered jeans. Mm -hmm. I like that. A little bit heavier than these two. A little bit. So. This has a smooth finish. This is a little rougher. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I pulled this one out because I, this is primarily a black and white print. But you have this border that happens every once in a while. So you could take a design like this skirt and you could make yourself a black and white skirt mm -hmm. and then this little insertion on the front could be in this light fabric. That's a great idea. I like that. So you, mm -hmm. it's like you found the perfect fabric and you didn't have to shop twice. <laughs> it's already there for you. I like mm -hmm. fabrics like that. Then you could pull out these colors on your top mm -hmm. too, which I think would be really I nice. I know. You could pull out one of the pinks mm -hmm. or greens or aquas, teal. Right. Yeah. I think that's great. And this one. I love this fabric. I know. 
Should we get this one out? I yeah, let's get, get this one out. It's Colors. collapsing in the middle, but <laughs> yeah, fantastic. The blue. I have. Nice. I took a piece of this one home, and I'm getting ready to make a skirt out of this. Mm -hmm. It's I the perfect that. weight, mm -hmm. and all kinds of potential for what to wear with it. Has a little stretch. Has yep. some lycra. Yep. Cotton and lycra. Mm -hmm. All right, those are our fabrics. Oh. And of course, we have our roosters. Somehow we dipped down on that one. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay. I'm going to go around and see if we have any questions. Okay. All right. Can the blue background fabric, top row, right, work for pants? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think so. Madrid. Yep. Valencia pants, getaway pants, Madrid pants, any pants. Yeah. What other of those fabrics would work for pants? Um, well, all of these I think all of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, you know, we talked about the Valencia yeah. working in the weight wise, weight. they all work. It's just a matter of mm -hmm. um, whether you would put some of these motifs on pants. I can't really distinguish why I would choose a skirt over pants for some of them. But weight wise, they all work. These are very soft cottons. This one is a little coarser. Um, would you use the cottage short shirt or other full cut shirts over the skirt, like the six cents? Yes, I think a cottage shirt over the six cents would be great. Yes. Because it's shorter, mm -hmm. all about the length. That would be a great combination. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there'd be anything better than a white linen or cotton cottage shirt. I would probably wear that all the time mm -hmm. if I had one. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Might have to make one. <laughs> <laughs> what does the light brown fabric look like on the other side? This um, one? I don't know if it's the Nanny Eero. Well, we'll or... just show you all of them. <laughs> so this is a print, but this one looks the same. Well, no, it doesn't either. Oh, interesting. This is like just a natural herringbone linen. Mm -hmm except it's hemp and cotton. And so this color is actually printed on there in addition to the glazing. Um, all of these are pretty much the prints show through. So you would want to know that before you chose what you were making. Will these cottons wrinkle much? Well, cotton wrinkles. Um, now, when you have lycra in them, it tends to reduce the wrinkles. In fact, I can't even really make those wrinkle. All of these have lycra in them. But the regular cottons, they're going to wrinkle. Cotton wrinkles. This hemp is going to wrinkle. Yep, they'll wrinkle. How do you add the contrasting band to the front of the six cent skirt? All right, I determined how wide I wanted this band. And I'm gonna say it's two and a half inches wide. Well, let's just say it's three inches wide. So I took this right front piece and measured back three inches and cut a piece that was three inches and three inches to wrap around plus two seam allowances and then I marked the point where this was going to be a seam line to attach this to this and added a seam allowance to the right front. This actually was a sample piece. I was experimenting with paint brushing black on white and it was my sample and I, I used it. Can we see the full print of the Day of the Dead print? Sure. Make the full width. Oops. 
Is that what it looks like throughout the whole whip? Pretty much a repeat side to side, it looks like. It's like it has two repeats side to side, a repeat side to side. Okay. So when you're talking about the elastic front, someone said, why not leave the elastic unstretched in the front between the top stitching? Um, you can do that. Way. You can leave the elastic in the front. I just want less bulk, but you certainly can leave it there. Do you think there's stress points when you don't put the elastic all the way around where you're stitching it? I've never picked up on the fact that those are stretch points. Have you? No. I think if it's the right, you know. Yeah circumference around, you're not going to have those stretching right. points, but yeah. if it's not, then it, it might create that. Um, looks like they did have a couple questions on narrowing the Valencia, which you already did, so that's good. Okay. Can you show the top middle fabric of maybe the people? Top, middle. I'd say it's the people at the top. Oh, the people? Mm -hmm. Top, middle. Okay, sure. Can you show more of the... Um, the tan and black cactus print. Mm -hmm. And she said, and how it can be used. Well, I think this is, this would make fantastic pants. And of course the mm. skirts, which we're talking about. I think it could be almost any of our shirts from Cottage to Florence to Frankie to now mm -hmm. or Zen. This is a pretty usable fabric in my opinion. The scale is not too large. The print is not super contrasted and uh, dynamic. It's very uh, controlled and just a nice artistic piece. So I, to me, I would use this for top or bottom. Okay. Would you line any of these um, prints if you're making pants? I don't think I would line any of these prints if I were making pants. I consider these fun, casual pants and no need to line them. I save my lining for sort of fabric specific, for instance, the panel pants where we're lining the sheerish uh, crinkled silk georgette. Or if I'm making wool pants and I want a little bit of protection for some potential itching. Or if I'm making very, very elegant pants that need to drape beautifully, I might uh, line them, but for casual cotton pants, I don't believe I'd bother. Okay, um, can we show the other black and tan print with the stripe of tan print? I'm trying to figure out which fabric that is. <laughs> black um, and tan with the stripe? Maybe. Um, Hmm. Maybe. So it's predominantly the black and white, or black and cream. And then, so if you were making the skirt, I would make the skirt in black, and then I would kick it with this. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. That would be fantastic. That's a great idea. And you don't have to calculate anything. It's already sewn on for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> and yes, it is said, is that a border? Yes. Um, yes. It's a panel fabric, really. Um, right. You can see it now as you yeah. hold, and you can see the yes. color. We don't there have we very go. much of it left, but... Mm -hmm. If I have an old panel pant pattern, can I use that for the Sew so Confident project? 
Yes. The only thing we did differently is we cut off four inches from the top, basically. We added the lining pattern, which you will not have in that original printed pattern, although you can use the original panel pant pattern for your lining. But we did create a totally different lining so that you have fewer pieces. For instance, if you are using the original panel pant fabric, you have an outer leg, three parts of a center leg, and then an inner leg. So you have one, two, three, four, five pieces for each front, plus the back. If you were creating, using that pattern to create a lining, I would eliminate some of those seams. For instance, I wouldn't do the three sections for the center panel in the lining. I would combine all of those. But you still, because of the shape, have to have the three sections. What we've done is created a lining that has darts at the bottom and darts at the top. It's a nice, nice lining, totally different uh, pattern for our lining for the panel pants. And the new pattern does include the lining pattern. But yes, uh, other than cutting off the top, we shortened them, we, we repositioned the knee patch a bit uh, to make sure that it landed at the knee. So when you start to shorten this pant, you're going to have to reproportion where that knee patch is. You know what, you can use your pattern, but you might want to just buy it <laughs> now that I think about it. Um, but it can be done. It can be done. Can we still wear that? Yeah, but there was a there was a bit of work that we did to it. Really, Definitely. we kept the original waistband treatment. We kept the pocket treatment, although we are not using the pocket for the fabrics that are in the kits. I don't believe that a pocket in the silk georgette is quite right, so we're not including fabric in our kits for that pocket. Uh, and we're not. I'm going to demonstrate the pocket in the video. In, if you're making it in something else, but in the silk georgette, I'm not going to make the pocket. And they ask, can you put pockets? Can you put pockets in in the panel pants? Yes, the pattern's included in the panel pant fabric. Is a pocket pattern? Yes, right. absolutely. Just wanna, okay. It's, a, it's basically a side seam pocket, but the way we construct it is using a French seam. So that's kind of one of its little things to learn in the, from the video, is how to make a French seam pocket. Okay, how much fabric would you need to make the skirt of the black and cream colored border? Um, I mean, do you think it would change the, the yardage that we have on the pattern? It'd be interesting to see if we could get it out of one panel. I'm of a mind that you could, but we'd have yeah. to look at it. Right. They're pretty big pieces. I know. Um, um, if I had a tape measure, I could probably <laughs> measure. Uh, we might have to get back to you on that once you email us. Mm -hmm. We'll check it out. For the panel pants kit, what ease is recommended? A lot. Uh, in your prep letter that you're going to be getting, I recommend six to eight inches of ease. You want that fabric to drape and fall. Now, four inches is minimum. I built mine. I chose the size that would give me eight. I know that seems like a lot, but it feels better. It drapes better. You want to be generous on it in this fabric. Now, if you're making this in canvas, you don't want eight inches of ease. But for silk georgette and super drapey fabrics, build in a good amount of ease. In the uh, DIY tutorial that you, you'll get tomorrow is a, an ease chart. And I believe the minimum, uh, the range is four inches. But I, as I've also stated in the prep letter, you want to have more than that. How about using the Nanny Eero fabric for the panel pants? Boy, I don't know. I, I think it's too heavy. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think so. Now, I will say this. When you Google Japanese gardener pants, you'll see all kinds of heavy denim, stiff pants. Those pants originally were not super drapey and all that flattering and all of that. They're workers' pants, meant to be workers' pants. 
that's what this fabric would do, but I'm not sure that that's where I would be headed myself with these pants. I'd rather see you make a Valencia in these or a Chesney or a Hudson or something like that. Um, with the Day of the Dead fabric, do, would you need to match it at the seams? For pants or the skirt? It doesn't say. Doesn't say. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's a good question. Um, I might be interested in matching this at a side seam mm -hmm. and the back seam of the skirt. So you might want to order a little bit extra. The repeat is about three quarters of a yard. So you could order an extra yard, uh, or for sure half a yard, to be able to match on the skirt the uh, back seam. Now if you're making mm -hmm. something like the 8th Avenue, uh, you only have one seam to match on the right hand side, but I think this panel insertion doesn't have to match. And that's a fun one, I think, to mix it up and have a different fabric. That's true. In the panel. That would be fun to do mm -hmm. something totally different mm -hmm. in the inset panel. Mm -hmm. What's the name of the book that you mentioned? Iris Apfel. It's by Little People, Big Dreams. There's so many great children's books out now. <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed reading this, even though this was a children's book. So, okay. Can you repeat what you're wearing? I'm wearing the helix top, shortened about four inches. So this is the one that has the swirl. Where are my seams here? I have a seam here, so it's like it's it's torqued or it's uh, twisted. A spiral, that's more the term. And then I'm wearing the uh, 8th Avenue, uh, the 6th cent skirt. Too many numbers. 6th <laughs> cent skirt. Okay, I don't see any other questions. Did you talk about the ease in the skirt? Well, ease in the skirt. I have my 4 inches of ease in this skirt. So I'm pinching an inch. One inch, one inch, one inch, one inch. Four inches of ease in the hips of the skirt. And you know, if you're unsure about where you are on that, cut this bigger at the center back, pin it together, put it on, pinch it, and then you'll know where to uh, sew that back seam. Mm -hmm. I had to do that with the roosters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you make a West End, I don't know if they mean jacket or pants, in the blue at the top? West End pants? Well, it said West End. I'm not sure. If I would not make West End pants in this. But maybe a West End jacket? But a West End jacket would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and they want to see the length of your skirt. So I'm going the length to of my skirt? Come back here. <laughs> <laughs> then they can see your shoes, too. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Put my legs together, <laughs> give you the pose. <laughs> Very nice. That is a cute top, too. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's I should have cut the sleeves off, but I didn't. Well, it'll be perfect for yeah. September. Okay. Okay. All right. Is that everything? That's all I see. All right. Well, next we have next week planned. Betsy's going to be here. And I wish you all a nice Labor Day holiday weekend and hope you enjoy yourselves. And otherwise, we'll see you next Tuesday. <laughs>